Welcome to morning prayer on Thursday the 7th of May. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. The Easter Anthem Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying he died to sin once for all. In living he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin, and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 118 O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim. His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now proclaim. His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord proclaim. His mercy endures forever. In my constraint I called to the Lord. The Lord answered and set me free. The Lord is at my side, I will not fear. What can flesh do to me, with the Lord at my side as my Saviour? I shall see the downfall of my enemies. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put any confidence in flesh. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put any confidence in princes. All the nations encompassed me. But by the name of the Lord I drove them back. They hemmed me in, they hemmed me in on every side. But by the name of the Lord I drove them back. They swarmed about me like bees, they blazed like fire among thorns. But by the name of the Lord I drove them back, surely I was thrust to the brink. But the Lord came to my help, the Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Joyful shouts of salvation sound from the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does mighty deeds, the right hand of the Lord raises up. The right hand of the Lord does mighty deeds. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvellous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Come, O Lord, and save us, we pray. Come, Lord. Send us now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God. He has given us light. Link the pilgrims with cords right to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will thank you. You are my God and I will exalt you. O oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. 
his mercy endures forever. Saving God, open the gates of righteousness, that your pilgrim people may enter and be built into a living temple on the cornerstone of our salvation, Jesus Christ our Lord. The first reading is from Exodus chapter 34. The Lord said to Moses, Cut two tablets of stone like the former ones, and I will write on the tablets the words that were on the former tablets which you broke. Be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning to Mount Zion, and present yourself there to me on the top of the mountain. No one shall come up with you, and do not let anyone be seen throughout all the mountain, and do not let flocks or herds graze in front of that mountain. So Moses cut two tablets of stone like the former ones, and he rose early in the morning and went up on Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tablets of stone. The Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there, and proclaimed the name, The Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God of merciful, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for the thousandth generation, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, yet by no means clearing the guilty but visiting the iniquity of the parents upon the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. And Moses quickly bowed down his head towards the earth and worshipped. He said, If now I have found favour in your sight, O Lord, I pray, let the Lord go with us. Although this is a stiff-necked people, pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. He said, I hereby make a covenant. Before all your people I will perform marvels, such as have not been performed in all the earth or in any nation. And all the people among whom you live shall see the work of the Lord, for it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. The Lord said to Moses, Write these words. In accordance with these words I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. He was there with the Lord for forty days and forty nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Moses came down from Mount Sinai, and as he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterwards all the Israelites came near, and he gave, he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face, but whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out, he told the Israelites what he had been commanded. The Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining. And Moses would put the veil on his face again, until he went in to speak with him. The Canticle In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. I will sing to the Lord who has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. This is my God whom I will praise, the God of my forebears whom I will exalt. The Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. At the blast of your nostrils the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed and by your invincible strength you will guide them to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them, O Lord, in the sanctuary which your hands have established. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. In your unfailing love, O Lord, you lead the people whom you have redeemed. Alleluia. 
The second reading is from Luke chapter 4. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I will give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God, and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead shall be raised. Where, O oh death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? The Gospel Canticle The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung up on the tree. Alleluia! Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is risen from the tomb, who for our sakes hung up on the tree. Alleluia. Let us pray. In our readings this morning, both Moses and Jesus spent a time in a place of wilderness, a place of isolation. And they both faced choices and decisions about how that time should be used and what their focus should be on. And as we particularly recall Jesus's temptations and his insistence that he would focus on God and seek strength and power from God alone, from his Father, not from elsewhere. So we pray, Heavenly Father, in our time of isolation, that you will give us the strength to keep our hearts focused on you, to avoid filling the space unnecessarily with distractions, with more social media, more food, more drink, more entertainment. 
but to allow ourselves moments where there is space and quiet in which we turn our hearts to you, seeking your presence, your peace, and to be faithful to you in our lives, now and in the days, weeks and months to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray that Christians throughout the world might likewise at this time be faithful to you, Lord. In this great time of global challenge, pray especially for our brothers and sisters in the Anglican Communion. Today we're asked to pray for the Anglican Church in the Diocese of Mumias in Kenya, for Bishop Joseph, the Diocese of Yola in Nigeria, for Bishop Marcus, and in England for the Diocese of York, for Archbishop John Sentamu, praying especially for Archbishop John as he draws towards the end of his time in that office. And within our own Diocese of Coventry, we pray today for the Dracut Benefice, which is currently an interregnum. We pray for your blessing, Lord, upon the church wardens and all those who are part of the church community and local community there at this time when they are having to find new ways of being church but without a vicar. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for this town and the villages of this parish. For your blessing, Lord, upon all the people here. Praying especially today for those who live in Clopton Mews. From our electoral roll, we pray for David Neal and his family. And we pray today for our home groups, unable to meet in person, but give thanks that they are still able to support one another We pray for those who are engaging with the Bible study course being led by Kay. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we hold before you, Heavenly Father, those individuals we know to be in particular need or distress today. Those whose families have been affected by coronavirus. those who are feeling the effects of isolation and loneliness. At this time we're asked in this parish to pray especially for Heather Woodfield, Terry Joins, David and Favi Brook, Sandra MacDonald, Tamsin Rand, Julia White and Geoffrey Lees and we name before you Lord anyone we wish to pray for this morning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring peace and comfort, Lord, to those who have lost a loved one, we pray. Especially those who are unable to be with their friend or relative at the time of their death. Among those recently departed, we commend to you, Lord, Betty Tyler, and Smart, Kathleen Posey, Francis Greatrex, Bob Schofield, Olive Whitehouse, Rosemary Vowles, Janet Doble and Arnold Hall. And today, on the anniversary of her death, we remember Diana Skoll. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So let us take a few moments to recommit ourselves to being faithful to God in the space, in this time of wilderness that we're experiencing in all that we do and say this day.
Almighty God, whose Son Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life, raise us who trust in him from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that we may seek those things which are above, where he reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.